everything you need to know about products and services that can improve your life. This is Experts on Call on CL 650. And welcome back to Strata Life on CL650. We have our guests in studio today, Drew Grout from Key Pacific Property Management, uh, Gordon Lai, client executive and vice president of CMW Insurance. And uh, the last section we talked about uh, community fire prevention with the president there, Brett Johnson. Now, Drew, over to you. We have our questions that come in, and this is always interesting. Any, either of our other guests can jump in if you have anything to add here. Uh, the first question is, we're considering buying a Strata unit in a large, older complex. We've heard some rumors that the strata is in poor financial shape and some major repairs are on the horizon. We're concerned about buying into a money pit. How can we get information before we buy to help us make the decision? The, uh, the is most... the short answer run? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 there's no, it's, it's, um, it's quite easy to get a lot of useful information. Uh, initially, when somebody's looking at buying a, a unit, they're dealing with a realtor, and uh, the realtor will um, um, request a Form B, is what they call it. It's a, it's a document that uh, provides information about the strata lot people are interested in, but also they can request information about the strata corporation, bylaws, um, depreciation reports, um, uh, envelope uh, reports, uh, financial statements, uh, minutes of uh, council meetings and AGMs. All of these pieces of information can help paint a picture of the state of the Strata Corporation. Claims experience. Claims experience. Well, that's generally not reported on, on Form Bs and things, but I, they could certainly ask And that. I suggest... Like I suggest my friends or people buying so ask, ask for that ask. because if there's lots of claims that will tell your story too, right? Yeah. Like if you're saying there's a lot of uh, like burst, burst pipes in common areas and things yeah, like that. Yeah, could be burst pipes, yeah. could be, you know, problems within units, yeah. vandalism. Right. So so, so if, you're, if you're looking at the financials, you can see what sort of financial position strata is in. But if you read the minutes, you can see whether they're having claims. Uh, because they're, they'll be yeah. discussing those in the minutes. Um, uh, it, it, the AGMs, you can see whether they have, have had levies, talked about them. So uh, special you, assessments and things, right? That's right. Now, that's right. we hear these stories that maybe councils are trying to hide things because the, the, the building maybe isn't in such good shape when they're trying to sell. They do in-camera meetings and stuff like that. So have you encountered that, or, or are the rules pretty straightforward that what what is the real state of the building has to be accounted for um so what you're what you're really talking about is uh, the reporting of the meetings and that's the minutes and and minutes aren't meant to tell everybody uh everything that was discussed it's meant to it's meant to tell you what was discussed and what decisions may have been made relating to that doesn't give you the tone of the meeting either right yeah. sometimes it doesn't yeah. um, some stratas provide more information than others uh, but I, I certainly have been in a situation where stratas are encountering uh, some problems and they're very sensitive to to the word getting out there that might be construed as a leaky condo right when it isn't it's mm -hmm. a couple of isolated uh, incidents. Um, certainly not systemic, but depending on what you say and how you say it, it can create the wrong impression. It can mm -hmm. work for you or it can work against you. Uh, but if you if you just stick to the proper um, reporting process, identifying the issue, um, uh, a brief brief discussion on what what the issue is, you don't have to get into the, all the arguments the council may have about it, and then any decision that council makes. So um, in this situation, you've got an older building. Um, that could require uh, major repairs. This this should be... Uh, there'll be something, something in, the in there. Yes. If it's a roof, there'll be some discussion and we're having roof problems. Um, you know, we've we've uh, called out somebody to inspect this area of the roof and provide quotes for it, blah, blah, blah. Uh, other meetings, subsequent meetings will uh, indicate that the um, quotes were accepted, repairs have been approved um, or completed. How far back should your realtor go? Well, they, they, generally speaking, they're, they're required to go back two, two years. Mm -hmm. um, we're required to provide two years mm -hmm. upon request. Do you think that's, that's pretty good? Uh, generally it is. Generally it is. But there's nothing preventing the homeowner who's been living there for some time to providing more minutes than that. Mm -hmm. You know, if they're, if they're being um, uh, prudent, they're keeping copies of all the minutes, not just two years. Sure. Uh, so they can get even more dated information. What about depreciation reports for Stratus too? Like, is that a majority of them buying into that? Uh, you know, we see that a lot on the fire side. We get asked to quote on fire alarm panels and stuff all the time. But I think each month there's more people deciding to do it. Yeah. 
Um, I couldn't tell you exactly how, how many are or not, but my guess is it's uh, 50% and growing, have, doing have it. Started doing already, it. yeah. Yeah. And, and is that and basically depreciation report? I mean, I see it on the fire side, but does it kind of give you an overlay of the entire building? Yeah, yeah, yeah it does. It gives you a 30, 30 year maintenance plan, right? Mm-hmm. In a nutshell, well, that's that's yeah. that's good to see. Yeah. So if they've yeah. got one, they can order that through the form B request. Yeah. All right, this is a totally different one. We're going to decorating now. We uh, the next question is: We have an ongoing argument in our strata regarding painting and decorating choices in our lobby. I'm sure others in the building share my thoughts, but. In the monthly meeting minutes, uh, sorry, uh, but the council does as it pleases. I wrote to the council requesting an opinion be included in the monthly meeting minutes so that other owners can hear from someone other than the council. They refuse to include my comments in the minutes. What can I do to make them include my thoughts? Uh, so somebody doesn't like the decorating and they want to get it changed. Uh, you're hard pressed to um, um, make the council put your views in the strata council meeting minutes. Mm-hmm. Um, it, that's not the um, the purpose of the minutes. It's not there to let other owners know what you think as another owner. It's there to uh, to indicate what business the council's talking about, whether it be painting a different color in the lobby or not. Um, can you put a motion forward at the meeting to discuss decorating? Yo, I mean, the council would do that. Yeah. Uh, you can write a letter asking them, you know, questions about it, and they'll they'll deal with the correspondence uh, in a in a in a fashion. But they're not certainly not going to reveal in the minutes everything you've mm-hmm. pu- you know put in your letter. It's not, it's not you, you can't stand on your soapbox at a council meeting. Mm-hmm. Uh, general meetings when the topic's brought up, everybody has an opportunity to speak to uh, uh, the, the the situation at the time. But but the other thing too is there are limits as to what changes a council can do on their own. And uh, I think it's section um, 71 of the act talks about making significant changes or alterations to common property. And if it's significant, then the owners need to be involved by a three-quarter vote. Uh-huh. But, I, I but wonder, painting color may not be so Well, but you know what? Uh, yeah, but I go to some buildings and I walk in and I go, wow, <laughs> hello, it's Boogie Nights carpet. Like it's the 70s and it's like this should, it's time to update this people. But it's a grudge purchase, right? Because it. It doesn't affect my own unit. It's for common area, and it's going to cost a lot to paint and decorate and put new lighting in for every hallway. Yeah. Uh, so it's often that 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 can be there like that for many many yeah. decades. Right? If you're if you're getting into a, a a revamp of your lobby, the owners would probably be involved at one point in the discussion because funds have to be allocated for that. I know, but not just the hall, not just the the, the foyer, the, the hallways. hallways. Yeah. Well, even more so. Yeah. Uh, those, those, that's a capital expenditure that uh, more often than not will require the owners either vote to use. Uh, CRF money or, or race money through a levy, yeah. in which case the owners themselves would have indi- individual opportunities to speak to that. And I guess that's why these dated um, always exist, because it's not something people want to spend money on. People, when you need the fire plan done and you need to uh, get the roof fixed. And people things, want right? to change things, but they don't want, always want to, pay want for to spend it. it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that sounds like a lot of things in life. <laughs> our uh, strata, and the next question says, uh, our strata is only 30 units, but we've established by the developer with a commercial and residential section. So I guess that's, uh, you know, on the main ground floor, they might have a commercial use, right? Yeah. We have been self-managed for years and operated successfully with just one operating fund, one CRF. Uh, We now engage with a management company and they're insisting that we sign three management contracts, open three bank accounts. That sounds expensive to me. Uh, If it works for us, can't we just keep things simple? So I guess they want to have uh, one management company doing the the retail, and then one running the residential. Is that what you're so, thinking? So, so a section strata typically would would involve a residential portion, a commercial portion, mm-hmm. and a joint portion, which corporate they call it often. Um, and they're three separate entities, mm-hmm. and that's why um, the the management companies require three separate contracts. Uh, we could be managing the um, the joint section and the residential section, but not the commercial section. They can in each section can engage a different company to manage their affairs. Well, how is it that they've done it in the past with just one? Well, when they're operating on their own, they're not um, bound by the same guidelines that a a uh, brokerage is. Mm. We're required under the real estate uh, council rules to to establish um, separate accounts for the uh, different stratas, different entities, 
um, both for operating, for CRF. So, so basically this is, you know, if they kept it in-house in and they ran it themselves, they wouldn't need it. But to employ a management company like Key Pacific, We're bound by you rules. have to do it by the rules. That's right. Okay, that's so right. that's pretty straightforward. Yeah. And the Act, too, talks about what should be, but there's no Strata Act. Police, and we're so. seeing this more and more where you have retail on the ground level and units above, and that yep. may, that's another layer of complexity, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, so... Uh, um, you know, it's always, I guess, best if we're we're managing all three sections. But uh, the reality is that uh, sometimes we're not. Um, so uh, assume assume there's three management companies. Mm-hmm. Well, each management company has to have a contract. Especially if you're doing shared parking and things like that, right? Yeah. Yeah. All right. The next one is our Strata Council recently fined me for a bylaw violation. I disagree with their interpretation of the bylaw and planned on making my feelings known at the uh, annual general meeting. Instead, I was refused admission because the fines were still outstanding. Was this handled properly? Uh, the simple answer is no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, you, you, The Act allows you... Uh, by bylaw to restrict people from voting at general meetings if the money is owing to the Strata Corporation that can be leaned under Section 116. It doesn't include fines. You can't lean for fines. Oh. Therefore, you, you can't put somebody in a position where they can be leaned for non-payment. And until you can do that, they're entitled to participate at the meeting. Hmm. They obviously have to let them in, but you know if they owe strata fees and you have that bylaw and you have followed the steps uh, where you're in a position to put a lien on or have put one on, you can you can keep them from voting. But they can still attend. They the can meeting. still attend. So it, it doesn't seem like that uh, was handled properly. Um, there is a process uh, for fining people. Uh, you got to make sure that that's uh, dealt with properly. But certainly, you can't prevent people from voting because they owe fines. That's the voice of Drew Grout from Key Pacific Property Management. And we have our other guests in studio. We have Gordon Lai from CMW Insurance and Brett Johnson from Community Fire Prevention. When we come back, we're going to ask each of you questions again uh, next on CL650. This is Experts on Call on CL650.